Today we're excited to introduce someone who finds joy and inspiration by reimagining the Rice Krispie. Jessica Siskin joins us to talk about switching careers, publishing her book, and how one photo launched her entire business, Mr. Crisp. This is School of Hustle, the show where we find advice and inspiration from people who are making their own way. I'm Shannon, the VP of Social here at GoDaddy, and I live and breathe the hustle of business. Today we're filming from the hustle of it all at the WeWork Times Square in New York City. Everybody, let's please give Jessica the biggest, warmest welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. And we're excited to have you. I'm especially excited because I remember my first Rice Krispie treat. Do you? I do. It was in elementary school at a sleepover, and it's such a nostalgic treat. I, I want you to think back into your past. What was your first experience with the Rice Krispie Treat? Where were you? Who made it for you? What was it? It's so hard to really remember your first Rice Krispie <laughs> Treat looking back. Uh, I have to say it was probably my dad who made it. I had a stay-at-home dad and a working mom. So all of the things that people, you know, you usually do with their parents, I was doing that with my dad. Um, he definitely made Rice Krispies treats when I was growing up, and then we used to have them in the little blue package in our lunchbox. But my first conscious Rice Krispies treat experience was actually when I was about 26. Uh, it was during a snowstorm, and I was at my best friend's apartment, and she decided to make them, and then I realized just how easy it was. Did you ever help your dad in the kitchen make treats? Not really. I can't <laughs> say I've ever been helpful in the kitchen, even to this day. <laughs> well, fast forward to now, you certainly are in the kitchen. You own Mr. Crisp, and you've published a book with 93 ridiculously fun crispy treat recipes. Tell us about Mr. Crisp and how it came to be. So Mr. Crisp is a one woman business. It is both a custom bakery where I make custom Rice Krispie treats for customers in New York City and an Instagram account where I showcase that work and work that I also make as content for social media so the whole world can see it. Well, every experience goes into shaping who we become. And I know that um, along the way, the Rice Krispie Tree resonated with you from your dad making it and you having this moment when you were 26 with your friend. But what other things in your life along your path led you to be where you are today, to be this successful business owner? So when I was in college, I studied a blend of psychology and art history. And I was really focused on the idea of how what we think affects what we see and what we see affects what we think. So these ideas were sort of germinating in my head for a really long time in terms of just what is art? What constitutes art? What amuses us? What feels special? So even though it's a very strange thing to do, make Rice Krispies treats as art, it actually was part of my natural trajectory. I, I remember um, reading that you actually saw a note on the side of the box that talked about adding food coloring. That was actually a recipe that I Googled. Okay. So yeah, so I used the recipe on the side of the box. Yeah. But yeah, so I, I Googled a recipe because my friend had invited me to a potluck dinner. Yeah. And we didn't know what to make and a friend of mine suggested that we make a Rice Krispies Treat surfboard. So I Googled Rice Krispies Treat surfboard because I'm a millennial and the recipe <laughs> had food coloring online. But you saw something that other people may not have seen. Why do you think that is? So I didn't see anything until I was actually making the recipe. Yeah. When I put, I remember it was the red food coloring. Okay. And when I put the red food coloring in, I had this, like I call it an Oprah aha moment. I had this immediate impulse to make a Rice Krispies treat cheeseburger. And it wasn't my <laughs> first artistic cheeseburger. I, char cheeseburgers are so visually dynamic. Yeah. And I had made them in the past out of Play-Doh. And I also made one out of colored Tootsie Rolls. So it was just sort of this natural evolution of art for me. Cheeseburgers, for some reason, were my subject, and I felt the need to make a cheeseburger out of Rice Krispies treats that minute. And was the cheeseburger or the surfboard the one that really set Mr. Crisp off? So I consider the cheeseburger to be the okay. first Mr. Crisp. The surfboard I made, but that was sort of just, you know, getting there, scaffolding, yeah. as, as you <laughs> might say. So yeah, so the cheeseburger is the first Mr. Crisp, and I made it on a Sunday night and I posted it on Instagram that night, and the rest has been history. And how did you come up with the name Mr. Crisp? So Mr. Crisp is actually the name of the villain in the movie Sister Act 2, which is one of my favorite <laughs> movies. It came out in 1993. 
It has the best oh musical God. sequence of all time. It does. <laughs> I I remember that. Lauren Hill, I think, was the She that was, movie. yep. That is yeah. so funny. <laughs> but the word crisp, of course, resonates with your key ingredient. Exactly. What is the most challenging request that you have ever gotten from a client? Everything's challenging until it's not, until you practice enough. But I have to say, the most challenging thing I ever did was I actually worked with Kellogg's Rice Krispies to make an entire holiday window out of Rice Krispies treats, and that was wild. It was super challenging, really fun, and really, really cool. Can, can you describe this window to me? First of all, where was it? So it was on 57th Street. This was about three years ago. There were a bunch of toys, so teddy bear, a skateboard, a basketball, a doll, just things that, you know, it was over the holidays, so holiday gifts. And what kind of pickup did you see in social? I'm sure people in New York love to take pictures of windows in the holiday time frame. You must have seen a ton of Engagement. Yeah, so that was really cool, and it was also something that was press worthy. So there was a lot of press around it. So I did see a lot of pickup around that time. It was really cool. What is your most proud moment in all that press pickup? Was there any one particular publication that blew you away? In the entire time I've been doing this, yeah. I think the coolest thing was being on the Today Show when my book came out. Mm -hmm. That was something that you know I watched my whole life. So actually being there was really awesome. That is awesome. Yeah. I, let's talk about your book. 93 ridiculously fun, crispy recipes in there. Exactly. So it's one recipe, but 93 different projects yeah, is how yeah. I like to describe it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. I like that. Yeah. Um, do you have a favorite project in the book? I have to say the cheeseburger. Yes. It's, it's the cover of the book. Yeah. It's my number one. It's my first child. <laughs> <laughs> now, what though if you're a beginner? If I were to get the book, I've never made a Rice Krispie treat in my life, let alone it's such a beautiful one. Where would I start? I would start with the cheeseburger. You would. It sounds I would. like the hardest, though. No, it's not at all. I mean, it's where I started. Okay. And it's actually just more, it's, it's building, right? So yeah. you build all the pieces, and then you end up with this cheeseburger, which was my experience also the first time I ever made it. Yeah. I actually screamed out loud when I put all the pieces together because I thought it was the <laughs> coolest thing I'd ever seen. Where do you get your vision for all of these projects? It comes from all different places. I like to travel a lot looking for inspiration, but I really am inspired by my customers most of the time. People yeah. have really cool ideas and they'll message me on Instagram and tell me what they think I should make or I'll just see something happening in pop culture. I, nothing is off limits to inspire me. I love this conversation. I want now to move into our icebreaker and play a little game love that games. we call Hustle Time. Cool. In the game Hustle Time, we set a timer for 60 seconds and we see how many cards you can get through in that time. Okay, can we get a timer for 60 seconds? Tell me when. Three, two, one, go. New York City tourist, help with directions or keep on your own way? Help with directions. If you could have a superpower, what would it be? Why? The best chocolate in the world comes from? Hershey's. King size or fun size? King size. Would you rather fly or talk to animals? Talk to animals. Favorite holiday? Yom Kippur. Instagram or Twitter? Instagram. Binge watch or watch weekly? Binge watch. Your go-to outfit? Uh, pajamas. Vacation, lounge on the beach or an active hike? Beach. Who is the most successful person you know? My mom. Fictional place you'd like to visit? Hogwarts. If you had to eat one thing for breakfast every day for the rest of your life, what would it be? Pizza. A ski trip or beach vacation? Beach. Describe yourself in three words. Happy, fun, and blonde. Surf's up or cocktails poolside? <laughs> Cocktail. Least favorite candy. Oh, that's a tough one. Airhead. Worst trend you've ever participated in. Oh gosh, sweatsuits. First record you bought with your own money. Dave Matthews. <laughs> favorite Disney movie. <laughs> Little Mermaid. You have to lose access forever. Oh! I think I did pretty that well. Was really, really yeah. good. So oh good my gosh. Game. Okay, so now, now let's let's see the moment of truth. Okay. 20. I think nice that's pretty good. Job. That's yeah. really great. Fantastic. See, I knew I'd crush it. That was a lot of fun. It really nice was. Nice job on Hustle Time. <laughs> Thanks. Now we want to move into um, our entrepreneurial discussion where these next set of questions we ask everybody. And it's fun to see how different entrepreneurs answer the same questions. So think short, concise answers, but not quite as fast as Hustle Time, OK? okay. Just Concise and we'll keep it moving. There's about 10. Okay. okay, let's do this. Favorite part of your day? Going to bed. Best piece of advice you've ever gotten? You can't pour from an empty cup, so take care of yourself first before you take care of anybody else. Worst piece of advice? Scale, grow, 
without thinking about it. Yeah, there's a lot of that, like just like grow even though you're not really sure where you're gonna grow to. How do you use your career to inspire others? I really like to do two things. I like to inspire people to do creative work. I like to add some intellectual value to creative work, because where I grew up, it wasn't really considered that important. Um, and I like to be honest about my challenges. Ever felt like walking away? No. One thing you still need to learn? How to delegate. <laughs> what do you want people to learn from you? I want people to learn that even though things look a certain way on social media, running a business is running a business. What's next for you? More of the same. Let's keep doing this. Who inspires you? My mom. Who challenges you? My friends. Yeah. Well, we also let everyone in social know that you were coming. And I have a question for you um, from Juwala. Juwala wants to know, what was your favorite sweet treat when you were growing up? That's a great question. Um, I'd have to say, so my mom used to travel to Arkansas a lot for work, and that's where Walmart was based, and she used to bring back on the plane these big coconut cakes, and it was always such a treat, and I'd eat it just with a fork. You brought up your mom a few times <laughs> in the interview, and I, I just find yeah. that so fascinating. Is there anything in particular about your mom that you absolutely love and admire? I just have to ask. Yeah, so my mom is just a, you know, a creative businesswoman. So she is someone whose career I really admire. She owns her own company and she manages a lot of employees and she keeps putting out amazing creative work and she really inspires me. We have uh, one last question for you and this comes from Noodle, our resident pug at GoDaddy. Ooh. Here he comes. <gasps> so, Noodle. Yes. Hi Noodle. So, so Noodle. Nice to meet you. Noodle is coming up on his one year anniversary at GoDaddy and he awesome. wants to throw a killer bash. He wants all of his guests to walk away with some swag. So he's thinking about making a doggy bag for everybody to take home. Could you describe for Noodle what makes the perfect takeaway doggy bag and how would the perfect shape of a Mr. Crisp fit in? Well, is this a doggy bag for doggies or for people? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like He'll that. Take either. He'll I feel like that. He'll have, He'll he, will, he will have humans at this party. Yeah. Okay, well, I think, I, you know, the <laughs> biggest crowd pleaser uh, for me in terms of a giveaway is an emoji. Everyone loves emoji treats. Oh, okay. So I think that, yeah, I think that would make a really nice doggy bag treat. I was just gonna say, looking at Noodle's <laughs> face right now, I think we want like the little tongue emoji. For sure. Uh, Mr. Crisp in this doggy bag. And, <laughs> and what other what other things would you put in this bag? Anything that goes well with a Mr. Crisp? Any pairings that that's we should a, know about? That, that's a good question. Any pairings? I yeah. mean, I, 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 don't, I think they're great on their own. Okay. Yeah. Well, you hear that, Noodle? You're well on your way to hosting the best bash ever with the best swag. Can I come? Oh, you're catering. <laughs> Perfect, I can't wait. Well, okay, this was great, and we're just so happy that you could be here. And, Me too. Uh, I'm so I'm glad you've had fun. Yeah, so we, much fun. I want to um, just let, uh, end on a nice, um, inspiring thought for everybody. Yes. So what I'm going to do is um, read three quotes. I want you to listen to the quote and tell me which quote resonates most with you. Okay. Okay? Let's do it. The first quote is, the way to get started is to quit talking and begin doing. Two, if you are positive, you'll see opportunities instead of obstacles. And three, failure is not the opposite of success, it's part of success. Those are all really good, but I have to say that number one resonates the most with me. I mean, that's how my entire business started. I just started doing it and it became a business. Like if you build it, they will come. I hope that everybody enjoyed watching Jessica today and learning about Mr. Crisp. Um, how do we follow you on Instagram or place an order in New York? So it's Mr. Crisp, that's M-I-S-T-E-R underscore K-R-I-S-P. So follow Mr. Crisp on Instagram. Follow GoDaddy too, because every week we have a fabulous entrepreneur to provide advice and inspiration. We're, we're pushing out School of Hustle on Instagram TV, YouTube, Facebook premiere, and teasers, of course, across Twitter, and LinkedIn, and Instagram. So please follow and stay tuned for more School of Hustle, and we will talk to you soon.